All right. So go ahead and find your seated position, legs crossed, dominant crossing is fine. And just take a moment to make those adjustments that help you sit up taller, that help you become more in sitting bones, finding your way into alignment, supporting the shoulders, arriving over the hips. And just start by pressing down to give you that sense of lightness, buoyancy in the spine and the torso. Seeking out that vertical space first and then keeping that, starting to feel the horizontal spreading. And then without disturbing much of this, bring your hands together in front of your heart, closing your eyes and just looking down away from your brain. So to begin a practice, we have to come into a more receptive state of mind. So just starting to pay attention to what's going on inside this morning, trying to replace any judgment you might have with just an interest or curiosity, non-judgment. And as we enter into a backbending practice, which can sometimes feel very demanding, reminding ourselves here that we're going to move in a way that honors our bodies and our spirits and our energy as they are today. So that we can do this practice that's really refreshing and opening, but in a way that is supportive to us and not taxing, not going to leave us depleted. And as you feel ready, bowing towards your heart, releasing your hands, Lifting your head and letting your eyes come open. And welcome. So we're going to be addressing most of the front body today as we open the anterior spine, the front spine. And so we're going to start reclining over a bolster. And if you don't have a bolster, you could substitute by rolling a blanket. You might roll a blanket over a yoga mat uh, to make it bigger. You might roll two blankets. There's lots of ways to kind of fashion a bolster if you don't own one. And sometimes it's a long distance for your head. Uh, once you're draped over that bolster, you might want to put a blanket where your head will go. So you're basically going to be placing the bolster at the center body so that it supports the lift and spread of the chest. And we're gonna take a cross-legged position and go into your less dominant crossing now since we were just in the, the more favored one. And then make sure your head comes down in a way that you're not really on the top of your head, you're more on the back of your head. So you might need to raise the height of the blanket. You might need to adjust where you're placed on your bolster so that you can Bring your head down more on the back rather than the top. And if your legs need some support, tuck something under your knees or your thighs so that you don't feel like you're gripping and holding, kind of waiting this out. We don't want to be feeling like we're waiting this out. And this is a really lovely passive back bend. We don't have to uh, work really hard for this one. We can just kind of drape ourselves over the prop and get this really beautiful front body opening. So the beginning position with the arm is just kind of a, a Shavasana arm. So just unfold your arms back to the hands resting. Passive shoulders, let gravity kind of bring the shoulders closer to the floor. This is a really good one to do right after you wake up when the body's really ready to become more supple and bend backwards like this. So just taking a couple breaths here. We're going to get a little bit into the chest now and the shoulders. So we're going to find a goal post arm position. So you're going to bend your elbows 90 degrees and try to create some heaviness in the elbows. 
just kind of let them drop toward the floor. And hopefully you're feeling a, stre a stretch across the chest and shoulders. A lot of us get really tightly bound there and the muscles shorten across the chest. So this is a really wonderful way to bring more balance to the upper back, to the shoulder girdle, to the chest. And when you feel like this has started to kind of work on you, then you can start to play with extension of the arms, taking the arms overhead and fully extending them. And if your hands are kind of meeting the floor and you have nowhere to go, grab your opposite elbows and extend through the elbows and treat the upper arms like an extension of the torso. So we're really lengthening the trunk. And because you're in a back bend, make sure you're taking your tailbone gently toward the ceiling so that we're not just kind of pinching off the low back. If you feel like you're blasting open your front ribs, bring a little control there. So we're not exploiting the front body opening and over shortening the back. So we want to pull the inner front ribs towards each other and towards the back body. If your arms are crossed, you're gonna change the crossing of the arms. We're just gonna stay a couple more breaths here. Try a few deeper in breaths, which encourages the front spine to open even more. If your arms are crossed, re-extend them. And then we're all gonna bring our hands lower and we're gonna help our knees together, step your feet onto the ground. And we're gonna roll to our side and help ourselves transition to hands and knees. We'll come to hands and knees. We're gonna come into heart chakra pose. We're still kind of addressing the chest. And I, I usually start this at the back of my mat to have the length in front of me so that I still have sticky mat under my hands. So the idea here is to keep your hips above your knees. Your knees are hip distance apart. And as you walk the hands forward, don't let your hips come with you. So keep the hips really right above the knees, lower your chin and chest. And if you feel like the shoulders are, are bothered here, you're going to be mo more moderate with the arms. So cross your forearms, rest your head on your arms. But the idea is to use gravity to kind of take the shoulder blades and the spine toward the chest. And you'll notice your exhale gives you a big opportunity to yield to the effects of gravity. So as you exhale, let the chest sink to the floor. As you inhale, make sure you're working with extension along the spine. So reach out through the crown of the head, protecting length along your spine. And again, if you're falling into your front body, we don't want to kind of rob Peter to pay Paul, as it were. So scoop the front ribs together and toward the back body. Bring some control to the front body so you're not just falling into your front body. And again, tailbone toward the floor, even though it wants to fly up toward the ceiling. I'm going to see who that is. Kathleen, bring your butt back just a little bit or your knees forward. Yep, that's perfect. We want the thighs vertical. Okay, so we're going to cover the six actions here. So go ahead and step your hands in. We're going to come into a kidney squeeze. We're going to hold each side for five breaths so that we get lateral movement to the spine. Just like forward bending, we can get a lot of uh, depth in our back bends if we work all the actions of the spine. So we're gonna come into the sideways movement, take a big in breath here, exhale, push your hips right, look to the left. Essentially trying to make the spine look like a crescent moon and just kind of hold it there. And of course we're getting the spine to move in a, in a lateral way, but you're also probably feeling your outer right hip talking to you. Try to keep equal weight in your hands. You're gonna be lighter in that left hand, so bring some attention there. Press that left hand more firmly into the floor. 
And with each exhale, gently squeezing that left side body, massaging the kidney. And you can bring small movement into the neck here. Just circle your chin around. So the neck and head have something to do. And we can address tension there as we hold this. We can do both directions. And then bring your head back to stillness. Transition through the inhale, through the center. Keep going, push your hips left, look to the right. Go as far as you can, come right up to your edge where you can sustain it, there's good sensation, you can breathe. You're looking off to the right, you're replacing some weight back into your right hand. And this time like you're nodding yes in slow motion. So you're gonna look forward and then look toward your navel. And when you're back in a neutral head position, just keep the head there and inhale, sweep yourself back to center. Okay, so now thread the needle for that last two, those last two actions of the spine, the twisting. So pick up the right hand and on exhale, just stretch the length of the arm through the space of the left limbs. So through the hand, through the knee, rest on the right side of the head, prop your head if the floor is too low. Slide your left hand straight on so it's, the arm is extended. And lean a little bit to the right. Try to peel your chest from the floor toward the ceiling, like your sternum wants to look at something on your ceiling. And don't forget to lengthen through the top of the head with every in-breath, so that as we twist, we don't telescope the spine. We always want to preserve the extension as we find the expansion. One more nice breath here. And then you'll start to kind of reverse the steps, sliding the left hand back, replacing the right hand on the floor, back to a neutral position, table pose. And then as you're ready, we'll do second side. So you can lift left hand, feed the length of the arm through the right limbs, rest on the left side of your head, slide the right hand forward, and shift your weight to the left, gaining entry to the upper back, especially on the left side. Enough pressure in your right hand, you feel the right armpit hollowing out. So just like we did um, in one of the earlier poses, try to replace some weight with that lighter hand, press it into the floor. Good. Finish out the exhalation and then bring your right hand back. Take your left arm out and we're back in table pose. And we're going to come into a supported sphinx now. So if you own a bolster, great. Otherwise, you can kind of fashion that bolster like we said earlier with a couple of blankets or a mat and blanket. We're going to take supported sphinx pose. So you can bring your, your front body onto the, the bolster but do so in a way that you can get the pelvis on the floor. And do so in a way that when you push the upper arms against the bolster, your elbows are lined up under the shoulders. So that's perfect position. And begin on the backs of your hands. Yeah. Spread the legs out a little wider than the hips and be even on the toes. So not just big toe, bring the small toes down and lift the inner thighs up. You might need to actually peel the legs from the floor individually to center them up. Kneecaps down directly. Good. Take the tailbone into the floor. Push the backs of the arms against your bolster to bring the chest forward, to bring the shoulder blades in. And try to position your head in a way that there's no crease in the back of the neck. So play with where your head should go so that you're not creasing the neck. Now, keeping the upper arms and the chest as they are, try to turn your palms down. Get the inner wrists to come down, but without collapsing your chest. So keep winding the inner upper arms out. And just sustain the wide actions here. Lift the inner thighs. Try to relax your butt. Soften the butt. And now we're going to extend the arms. So without the chest receding, 
Scrub the mat with your hands, come away from the floor with the forearms, and fully extend the arms. And try to roll the inner arms so they look at the ceiling. The inner elbows look at the ceiling. Good. Lift the inner upper arms up. Just like your groins are lifting up, lift the inner upper arms up. Tailbone goes deeper into the floor to match this with some foundation. Reaching through the crown. Try to keep your lower back as crease free as you can with the working of the pelvic tilt. Open your front spine with a couple deep breaths. Can you scrub the mat with your hands without your shoulders following? So scrubbing the mat with the hands means you're pushing, but can you draw the shoulders back away from the wrists? Dynamic action. Good. Go ahead and relax it down. And now you're gonna take your right forearm and just cross it in front of the bolster. It's gonna be your foundation. So some of you might need a strap for this. I'm gonna open the front thighs and the hip flexor, the left leg. So if you can't hold of your left foot directly, you might move a strap onto your left foot. Go ahead and grab your left foot. Look at your knee and step it in. For most of us, we have the knee wider than the hip. So make sure your knee lines up with your hip. Bring some pressure into your right forearm. Notice how your hip points might not be matched with their weight. Restore some weight to your left hip point. Keep looking forward. Lengthen out through your left knee and try to seal the gap between your left hip flexor and the floor. Keep the buttocks soft. Don't make the butt do this. Everything else in the body should be working, but the butt should get a break on this one. Tailbone into the floor. A couple more breaths. Try not to collapse into your shoulders. Keep anchoring into your right forearm. These look great. Awesome. Go ahead and release the left foot. We're going to swap it out. So the left arm will be the new foundation crossing right in front of the bolster. Snuggle it in so that you're really tight up to that bolster. Your elbows right in line with your shoulder. And then begin to bend the right knee. Grab hold of the foot directly or with a strap. Step the knee in line with the hip, so you might have to look back to see what that looks like. And then really press in through the left forearm, anchor through the pelvic tilt, take the pelvis and the tailbone into the floor. You have a passive left leg. You're breathing deeply. Try to seal the gap between right hip flexor and the floor. And where's your chest? Is your chest back in the shadows? Shoot it forward. Deep breathing. Good. Go ahead and release the hold. And we're going to find a way to move off the bolster. We're coming to a series of lunging positions, or I should say positions that originate from a lung, lung stance. We're going to do kind of a variety of things which means we're gonna be kneeling on one knee. So I usually recommend a kneeling blanket. If you don't have a blanket, I think most of us do, but you can always double your mat up in the center to make it thicker or triple ply, I think it would be. But just make sure the knee is comfortable. And sometimes when we do these lunging uh, positions, the blocks can be helpful. And you may or may not know if you need them, so just have them handy toward whatever mat end you're facing. And we're going to begin with the right foot forward and the left foot, the left knee kneeling. <clears throat> Good. So just begin with your left hip above your left knee and your right knee above your right ankle. And take your hands onto your hips and bring the elbows in behind you so they're only as wide as your shoulders. And use your thumbs to gently push in on the lower back to encourage that pelvic tilt, that action that we want here in the back bend. And look straight ahead. And for some of us, this can be enough. We, we're very tight in the front body for a lot of us. But for others, you might wanna shift yourself forward 
And imagine there's a book on your head. So the idea is that the book doesn't just drop to the floor. So as you shift yourself forward, keep the book on your head. You're trying to keep your torso upright. And that's gonna keep you in the wise actions here. Yawning open the front of the back leg. A few deep breaths. So this is our very first stage of this little sequence. And I like the sequence I came up with so much that I'm gonna make it a little mini short on YouTube. Uh, so if you like it, you could just watch that on YouTube and do it again. So now we're gonna come back a little bit if you did shift your weight forward, bring your weight back. And we're gonna bring both hands to the floor for lizard pose inside the space of the right foot. And you can angle out your right toes 45 degrees and squeeze your right knee to your right shoulder. So here, for some of us, this is mild. For some of us, it, it has more sensation, but you're really kind of starting to get in deeper to the right hip space. And if it's too mild, you can come down to your forearms. And if that's too deep and you need kind of to Goldilocks it, somewhere in between, you can prop the forearms on blocks. So you want to feel something, but you don't want to feel too much. It's kind of always the same story with our poses. So mining the right hip space here. So a couple more breaths out. If you did go low on the forearms, you're going to start to come back up onto your long arms. We're going to do twisted lizard now. So you're keeping your left hand down and you're going to take your right hand to your right knee, just kind of grab your right knee. And if you need to prop your left hand higher, use a block. So sometimes the floor feels a mile away. Use a block to bring the floor to you. But you're going to revolve your torso to the right. And as you point your chest to the right, remember, extend through the top of the head. Like your chest really wants to see something on the ceiling. Try to clamp the outer right hip in. Don't blast it out. And to help your chest see what's on the ceiling, actually take your eyes and look to the ceiling. And start to unwind yourself, bring your hands back to the floor and point your right toes forward again so they're not turned out anymore. And again, if your hands feel like the floor is too far away, prop them with blocks. We're going to come into a very anchored uh, full lunge. So curl your left toes underneath and everybody extend their left leg completely. Extend it completely. Sometimes we think it's completely and so keeps extending the left leg completely. Look forward. Remember the action of the inner upper arms. Line them out. Look forward. Breathe. I want everybody from here to pivot the left foot and ground it. We're coming into side angle pose. Prop your right arm on your thigh or keep your hand where it is. Take your left hand to your left hip. Revolve your chest to the left. This is why we needed a little hip opener earlier because we're really deep into the, that right hip space if you have the 90 degree knee. Some of you don't. It's more of an obtuse thing. Uh, try to find a 90 degree right knee. Yeah, better, good. Awesome, you guys look great. Now come back to your both hands down and off of the back heel position. You may or may not want to prop the left hand, but now guess what? We're going to revolving side angle. So keep left hand down, take your right hand to your right thigh, turn your chest and point it to the right. Your knee, your right knee will try to go wide here. Keep your right knee in line with your right ankle. And if you can support it, the cherry on top is the side side angle arm coming in next to the ear. And remember, your chest really wants to see the ceiling. We're back to the floor. 
Some of you, um, I'll show you where we're going. You decide if you're going to do this with your knee up or down. But the last piece we're going to do here is a full lunge, shaking the torso up. So you can do this by lowering that left knee first. Wow. Wow. Look at you guys. Fully extend the back leg. Okay. Beautiful. Take your hands down. Find your way to downward facing dog. Be careful with that blanket on your mat. And now take yourself into child's pose. And just take a nice minute here before we do second side. Just a few more breaths. As you feel ready, you're going to start to prepare for second side, keeping the right knee down and stepping the left foot forward. And just remember those lines. We have left knee over left ankle. We have right hip above right knee, hands on the hips, elbows clamped in a little bit, pushing on the tailbone, lift and spread your chest. And again, if this is too mild, like there's a book on your head, just kind of slide forward, opening the front of the right thigh a little bit more, but not at the cost of shortening the lower back or tilting forward. Breathe into it. Open your front spine, lift your chest. Keep the spine extended, lift through the crown. And help yourself back if you did slide forward just kind of bring yourself back and take your hands down inside the space of the left foot again propping on blocks if you need more height turn your left toes out 45 degrees but that doesn't mean the knee gets to fall out wide keep the knee against the shoulder okay. and if you need more again arms can go lower you can start to crouch down a little bit you can bring forearms to blocks or floor Remember, this is about the left hip. We're going deep because that'll help us keep that nice deep position for side angle pose, revolving side angle pose. Twisted lizard. So if you did go low, come back to your long arms. We're going to keep the right hand down. Again, you can put a block under it if it's feeling too far away. Take, uh, grab your left knee with your left hand. And now use that position of your hand on your knee to help you wind the torso to look, chest looking at the ceiling. And draw the outer left hip bone in. See if you can bring that right armpit chest around out of the shadows. Lengthen through the top of your head. Don't let it drop. Keep the extension of the spine really energetic. Squeezing out another exhalation and then helping yourself turn back to face the floor. And turning your left toes back to a 90 degree pointed position, toes in front of heel. We're gonna come into the hands down version of our lunge. So keep your hands down, curl your right toes under and fully extend the legs. If you feel rounded in the upper back, find a way to bring your chest forward. Maybe look forward. Maybe wind the flesh of the inner upper arms out. Keep the back leg strongly extended. Shoot a laser beam out of your right heel. Breathe. So for side two, I want you to kind of challenge yourself not to come away from the floor. 
as we come into side angle pose. So pivot your right foot, ground the right foot. You can prop your left arm on your thigh if you need more modified position for the upper body, or you could keep your hand down on the block or the floor. Take your right hand to your right hip. Start to turn your chest to the right. Don't drop the top of your head. Keep it representing the beautiful line of energy along the spine. And maybe you take that right arm into position, side angle position next to the ear. Sweeping your arm back to the floor, pointing your chest back to the floor and coming off the back heel. Good, right hand stays down, revolving side angle. Left hand to the left hip. Clamp the left knee and don't let it flare wide. Start to let your chest find that thing, that spot on the ceiling. Bring your chest toward the ceiling. Keep clamping left knee in. And maybe the cherry on top, maybe the arm comes in, maybe it doesn't. Pull the outer left hip bone in. Keep the back leg extended. Good. Help yourself face the floor again, both hands down. So this is the finale here. If you're gonna keep the right leg extended, you can do that otherwise lower the knee. We're gonna sweep the arms up for that full standing lunge. Back leg extended. Try not to lose the 90 degree knee. Lift your heart center. Beautiful. Sweep the hands down and step it back to downward dog. And then from there, again, finding child's pose just for a minute, letting it go. and help yourself out of child's pose. If you can keep your blanket, we're gonna do a couple ustrasanas, camel pose, which is a great pose to kind of put all that front body opening together. So you're gonna start kneeling and line your feet up with your knees. So we don't want feet together, knees wide, because that gives us that kind of imbalance in the thighs. And we want small toes down. So it's very similar to the cobra poses we did, or sorry, the sphinx poses we did. Small toes down. You know your thighs wanna do this. They wanna rotate from the inner thighs out when you back bend. So we're gonna control that by imagining the inner thighs moving back as we go into a back bend. So the first one we're gonna do is our hands on our hips. And elbows, Wide as shoulders, you clamp the elbows a little bit. Push in on the tailbone and lift your breastbone forward in space and up in space and let your eyes track slightly up the wall. And remember, this isn't about arching the low back, it's not about throwing the hack. So we really want to encourage lift and spread. We also want to keep our hips in line with knees. So as you exhale and deepen, Try to maintain the stabilized kind of foundation of your hips floating above your knees. We don't want them moving forward so much. We don't want them moving back. Keep the back of the neck long and crease free. And take a few big in breaths to really open the front spine. Don't let your eyes roll back in your head. Keep your gaze very soft. Your temple flesh descending and a sense of quiet here. And now inhale and come out of it. If it's comfortable, sit on your heels. If it's not comfortable, child's pose. If it's not comfortable, sit on a bolster. So find a way to just take a little pause because we're gonna do a couple more. The second stage we're gonna do is clasping the hands behind the back. So as you're ready, you can come back to your kneeling position. 
Think about someone draws a Sharpie down the centers of your thighs and they're parallel. So what we don't want to see is a big triangle, so parallel thighs, small toes down. Clasp your hands behind your back. Open the palms like you're holding a big brick in your hands. Extend your arms fully so the elbows are not bent. And with your hands right there on your butt, that's a reminder to move the buttocks forward, move the tailbone in. And think about, and this might work for you, might not, but that your hands are an anchor for your heart center to reach away from. So as you draw the hands towards the floor, lift the heart center away from those very anchored hands. Let your gaze track out the wall. Take an in-breath here. On your exhale, draw the hands toward the floor, lift the heart center, and keep your hips right above your knees. And remember, we're not just trying to push into the abdomen. So if you're kind of exploiting that, compact your front body, inner front ribs, zip them in, draw them back. Good. On an in-breath, lifting up and out of it, and go ahead and sit down or sit forward. And we're gonna do one more version of Ustrasana, camel pose. So the third version will be with hand support either to your heels or to some blocks. So if you have blocks, you'll put them right next to you. Fingertips is, is usually what I do for my short arms. We all have those kind of ideas about our proportions, but <clears throat> whatever your idea is, you might have to raise the height of the block by extending your fingertips. Um, if you're going for the heels, most of us need kind of an intermediate position. So you're gonna curl the toes under to raise the heels so they're not as far away. Also, if you're going for the heels, you're gonna start from a clasping hand position. You're gonna come in the very same way we just did. And at the last moment, you're gonna split the hands apart, grab the heels without a lot of um, the rest of the body noticing is what I like to say. So if you're going, if you're gonna use the block support, you're starting there already and the tops of your feet are resting, your small toes are down. So find your starting position either fingertips to blocks or clasping the hands because you're going for the heels. You line your hips up above your heels, pressure into the hands, whether you're doing clasping or fingertips to blocks, pressure into the hands. Remember, you need an anchor for your heart center. Let the heart center start to rise out of that anchor. Lift, lift, lift. Good, keep, a, keep track of the lower back staying long. And then you're gonna go into your deepest version, whether it's splitting the hands, finding the heels, and holding or holding with the hands pressured into the blocks, maybe a bit lower. So it's not about throwing the head back, it's not about the eyes rolling up in the head, it's not about pinching off the low back. And if you're pushing into your abdomen, control that as well. Two more breaths. If you went for your heels, you might want to bring your hands to your hips. And we're all going to inhale and come up and find your resting position one more time child's pose sitting on your heels sitting on bolster but something quieting Okay, and as you're ready, come on to your back. We're in the last third of the, the practice, so we're gonna start to just kind of turn the dial down a little bit, and we're gonna come into a twist. And as we know, twists are kind of the antidote to uh, the potential for back bends to upregulate us, which is never the point. We want the energy. We don't wanna feel anxious or kind of like we're idling high. So come on to your back. We're gonna come into supine twist. 
but belly turning style. So we're not gonna cross the legs. So extend your arms out to your sides with your palms down. And raise your feet from the floor one at a time. And just let gravity drop the thighs in toward your chest. And a reminder here before we come into the action that when we move in an L shape, we have to move around a feature on the femur head, the greater trochanter. We can't just sweep up to the shoulder line. So we have to move directly over and then directly up. So it's an L shape. So we're gonna move to the left to begin with just because I'm facing that way. So that's easier for me. So on an exhale, half of the exhale, we're gonna take the knees directly left and then the, save the second half to pull up to the shoulder line and hold and try to roll your outer right ribs to the floor. Look either up to the ceiling or look right and try to bring some sense of anchoring back to the right shoulder. And now draw the knees halfway down and then back over. And you might rest by grabbing your shins or your thighs. Just take a little moment here before we switch sides. And then again, sweep the arms so they're out perpendicular from the trunk. Wait for an exhale. Half of the exhale, we move over. And then the second half, we pull up to the shoulder line and then just hold it there. And do the work of restoring balance. So peel the left ribs back to the floor. Bring some weight back to your left shoulder. And if you can, turn your head and look left. And now out of the L shape, you move down first and then over. And once you're on your back again, hug the legs in either over the shins or behind the thighs. We're gonna do this twice more, just kind of increasing the effort just slightly. And you can always opt out and do what you did before, do the version that's best for you. But what we're gonna do this time is take the legs straight up on the way over, but we're gonna bring them back with bent knees. It's kind of a modified way to do the full belly turning pose. So sweep the arms wide again, or not. Take your legs straight up. Anchor into your torso, your shoulders, your head. Wait for an exhale. On that exhale, half of the movement to the left is moving sideways. And then other half is pulling up to the shoulder line. Hold it there. It's harder to hold, so we'll just do it for a breath or two. Now bend your knees. Bring the knees down and back over and hug in. This is a great one if you have any digestive issues happening. Uh, we get the digestive juices flowing quite nicely here. It's also a great one to skip if you just ate. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't. All right, so spread the arms. Extend the legs. Wait for exhale. When you're ready, exhale halfway to the side, halfway up and hold just a couple breaths working on those kind of restorative actions. So you're bringing weight back to your outer left ribs, your left shoulder, you're using your abdominals. Good, now bend the knees, bring the knees down and back over and hug it in. So as you might guess, the last version is straight legs over, straight legs back. And if you know or decide that's not wise for you today, you can do one of the previous two versions, bent knees for the whole thing, or bent knees for half. One tip here, if you're gonna do the whole version, as you bring your legs back, straight legs back, use your bottom leg to support your top leg. So pro tip right there. All right, so spread your arms. Okay, figure out which version you're doing. Extend your legs, exhale. Hold just for a couple beats, and then you're gonna bring it back. So down and back up. Top leg is supported by bottom leg. 
Good. Once you're there, bend the knees, hug it in. And now just know one day, someday, those straight legs are on the floor at the shoulder line. So that's the target, on the floor at the shoulder line. The last one, last side. We'll work straight the legs up if you're doing straight leg. Wait for exhale. Move halfway over, halfway up, and hold. Bring them down and back over. Bend them if they're straight and just give them a little hug. Good. And now place your feet. We're going to come into bridge pose, getting the, the action of clasping so that we can take it into Chatush Padasana in front of that block that we use. So the idea is going to be to have your arms fully extended and the hands are interlocked. I don't want floating hands or bent elbows. So the idea is to extend the arms completely underneath you, of course. You can watch for a moment, don't come into it yet, but extended arms completely and hands grounded. So what we don't want to see is the hands floating or the elbows kind of bending. Otherwise, we're not as anchored, okay? So from your bridge pose, walk your feet in, toes in front of heels, and just start with your arms at your sides, pressing into the floor to get the outer upper arms down, shoulder blades to lift into the chest. Pelvic tilt in is active now. Take the tailbone toward the ceiling. On an exhale, lift your hips and bring your hands together, interlock position. Rock the shoulders underneath you even more. Try to fully extend the arms and clasp those hands deeply. Keep the small fingers on the floor. Roll the inner thighs down. Tailbone up to the ceiling. Step into your feet. Use the power of your legs, which is something we often forget in this pose. Good. Now we've got it. Beautiful. So separate the hands. Rock the shoulders back out from under you. Walk your spine down. and rest. You can either separate your feet and drop the knees in, or you can hug those legs back in to reclining child. And then as you're ready, you're gonna set up with your block. And remember, when we do this pose, we want the block running with the spine, so not crossing the spine, meaning you wanna work with the um, vertical rather than horizontal aspect of the block. You can choose the height. You have low, you have medium, you have tall. Okay, so you're going to place it under you, right under the sacrum and tailbone, and you want the block placed in a way that you can clasp your hands in front of it, which means your hands are between the block and the feet. Find your perfect height. Take the time to roll the shoulders down to the floor, lift the shoulder blades into the chest and bring the tailbone toward the ceiling. Your chin and chest are becoming more close. Your chin might be snuggling into that little pocket between your collarbones. Anchor into your arms and make sure your toes are in front of your heels. And just hold this bridge pose for a moment just to really encourage the wise actions of the upper body and of the pelvic tilt. And then keeping that, you're gonna to begin to raise the legs one at a time, starting with bent knees. And then take the legs up. So because we're inverted, the legs should be the light, buoyant part of the body. So lift with your legs, defy gravity with your legs. And similarly, the torso is now the anchor. So press the torso, the head, the shoulders, the hands into the floor, into the block to support the lifting action of the legs. Keep the outer upper arms rolling down toward the floor. Keep the chin tilting into the chest. And now going into stage two, we'll bend the knees, 
Take the feet to the floor one at a time and begin to extend your legs resting on the heels so the toes point up. And you may at this point separate your hands, palms facing up. Roll the inner thighs down. And sometimes, and I'm really gonna do this, I keep reminding myself to do this. I'm gonna make a string or a loop or a rubber band. I wanna bind my big toes because the big toes tend to pull apart. So imagine you put a big string loop around your big toes. They can't go any farther out wider. Roll your inner thighs down. Legs are fully extended, chest is lifted. And just a few more quiet moments. Now step your feet in and help yourself lift off the block and move it away. Mm -hmm. Extend your legs one by one. Bring your arms overhead and clasp your hands. And now slide both feet separated to the left. Both feet to the left. And then pick up your right foot and take it on top of, take your right ankle over your left ankle. And now move both of your hands to the left. Try to keep your arms straight. Banana asana, so feeling the spine moving in a crescent shape again and feeling the right side body really elongate. Breathe. If you need more, keep taking the feet and the hands farther to the left. Gently bend your right knee and unstack your ankles and slide your feet back to center. Then bring your hands to center and change the interlock of the hands. With the feet separated, move the feet to the right. And when you get the feet to the right, as far as you want them, then pick up the left foot and cross left ankle over right ankle. Then slide the hands to the left, to the right, sorry. Breathing into the left side body. Bending the left knee, unstacking your ankles, helping your feet back to center, helping your hands back to center. And from here, you're going to find any other movements that you need and then come into final resting pose using any props that you need. So make sure to give yourself a blanket if you're cold at all. Support your head if you feel like you kind of roll toward the crown. Remember, we want to be on the back of the head. If the lower back feels a little sensitive, maybe tuck a rolled blanket or bolster under your knees. We move through the sheets of the body one by one and just the first one is the physical body. Letting go of any tension that you're still holding on to, just allowing the body to soften.
Press, side breath. The practice is a clenched fist, and now we release the fist. Observing the waves of breath. Observing your mind as a placid body of water, reflective, mirror-like. Sensing your energy. Bliss body. Feeling a oneness, connection. Maybe a wholeness. Joining with presence. For the last minute, just really tapping into the allowing piece of Shavasana. Whatever is present right now, allow. Let go of the resistance. The fact. Just allow your next few breaths to deepen. Deep cleansing breath in, thorough exhalation. Track that breath completely out. All the stale breath flows out. Another big breath in. Another complete exhalation. Resuming easy breathing. Start to wake up your fingers and your toes. From there, bending your knees and elbows. And from there, moving to either side of your body. When you come to your side, just remain on your side for a few moments. We can so quickly escape presence. So really try to keep yourself present. There's a saying I like, I don't know who made it up, maybe I did, but moving at the speed of presence. Keeping yourself in a present state, move from sideline to seated. And from your seated positions, helping yourself sit up a bit taller. And as you bring the hands to the heart center, let this represent gratitude. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose and let it go. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. Right.
everyone. Thank you for joining me today. And we'll be back, uh, well, we have two classes Wednesday and one Friday. So hopefully see you again. Have a great day.